So question three states, uh, graph F as given by both laws on the same screen and comment on the similarities and differences. And then it says uh, use T equals to 5,700 Kelvin, uh, which is the temperature of the sun. Uh, you may want to change from meters to the more convenient unit of micrometers where uh, one micrometer uh, is equal to, is equal to uh, 10 to the negative six meters. So in other words, yeah, this micrometer, I think that's a mu symbol. Yeah, another Greek symbol, and then uh, ten to the negative six, so that's six decimal places. Uh, in other words, this is or six zeros is, or in, in other words, this is one meter equals to one million micrometers. And uh, yeah, since we're dealing with very small wavelengths, you want to just scale this uh, up or just use a smaller unit over there. So let's just uh, scroll down there and keep that in mind, and let's go all the way here. So uh, solution to question three. So to convert uh, to micrometers, we multiply lambda which is a wavelength in meters of the equation, times it by 10 to the six, and this is just uh, 10 to the six micrometers divided by meters. Yeah, or you could also divide it by 10 to the negative six if you want, um, yeah, if you want to use that conversion that we were given. But, but anyway, so we multiply uh, lambda yeah, of meters uh, times it by 10 to the six, which is of uh, micrometers divided by uh, meters, this is the conversion, and then we get uh, equals to lambda in micrometers. So this, you could just use our basic Units and those just cancel. And we're just left with uh, this one here. So anyways, uh, so going further, further, so this is an Excel sheet that I made. Here's a link to it. You can download and uh, you can click and download and view, the, view it there. Uh, but I'm just going to show the charts that I made. So here's the energy density, F of lambda, and the units are. And the units here, uh, I kept these as metered there. Just because uh, yeah, the calculus book uh, chart is the same thing. Uh, but the, the wavelength, I just keep it at uh, micrometers. So energy density in terms of joules, energy divided by meters cubed, and then and divided by m. So they separate this just so it looks like it's so it's energy density of volume per each wavelength. So there's the m over there. And then here's a wavelength right here. So in micrometers. So we convert it so that's small numbers, right? Like this, instead of going to 15 times 10 to the power of negative uh, 6. You just multiply that out. So uh, so here is the the two graphs. So here's from, from 0 to 30, but I've also made this from uh, 0 to 500 on the energy density right here. So that, uh, yeah, so it's not that high, but you can see the similarities here for the black body radiation. So uh, Planck's law is the, is the solid black line, and then Rayleigh Jean's law is the dashed line. You can see it's pretty uh, well matches up at uh, higher wavelengths. This gets higher here. And then the, this is pretty much uh, similar to it. But then if you go, uh, if you look at uh, shorter wavelengths, and then also change up the scale so you could see, yeah, see it better at shorter wavelengths. So here's what happens at shorter wavelengths uh, here. So Planck's law again, uh, notice Planck's law goes all like this and goes down. And then Rayleigh Jean's law just keeps going, skyrocketing up there to infinity. So yes, the first figure shows that the two laws are similar for large uh, lambda. So large wavelengths, these are all similar. So it's matching up over here. Then once you get below this, uh, it, it starts messing up. Yeah, so this one here, so this is above 10, even above 5. Then once you get uh, below uh, wavelength of 4 or 3, all the way closer and closer, uh, smaller and smaller, this, there's a big uh, divergence here. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So it goes to infinity. So the second figure shows that the two laws are very different for short wavelengths. So here's short wavelengths. This is again the ultraviolet catastrophe. So the so UV catastrophe because uh, it's yeah the, the original theory, the Rayleigh Jean's law was showing it was is skyrocketing up, which which sh which should um, it which should mean that uh, uh, hot objects should be showing really really high intensity uh, of short wavelengths like UV and so on. But in, uh, in actuality, it dips down. So once you get past this visible range and for the sun, and it just dips down. So you don't get uh, a lot of these high frequency waves. All right, keep going further. So Planck's law gives a maximum at, uh, in this case, lambda is equal to 0.5 micrometers. So right about over there is the maximum. And so there's the peak uh, of the yeah, peak uh, energy density or intensity. So most of that light that's coming uh, from the sun is in this 0.5 uh, micrometer range. And then uh, while the Rayleigh Jean's law gives no maximum or minimum, it just keeps going. Yeah, so there's no maximum there, it just keep, keeps going infinity, and there's no minimum either. Whereas this one here, the minimum goes to zero over there for the Planck's law. So yeah, that is question three. So now let's look at question 
four. And what was question four? Scroll up. So question four says, use your graph in problem three to estimate the value of lambda for which uh, f of lambda is a maximum under Planck's law. So we already did that one. That's just, um, that's just 0.5 micrometers. So from the graph in question three, f of lambda has a maximum under Planck's law at, at lambda is roughly equal to approximately equal to 0.5 micrometers. So there's the maximum over here. This is the max for Planck's law, and that's straight over at this uh, 0.5 micrometers.